Hi, I'm here with um, makeup artist Brooklyn Bolson, and I'm Hannah Doherty. Um, what made you interested in makeup? Um, I'm not really sure. When I was like in like middle school, mm -hmm. and remember back in middle school how we would always go to like skating rink or something. Um, one of my friends just put tons of black eyeliner all <laughs> over me, and I think that's just kind of like. Cause I was a tomboy when I was in like oh. fifth grade, like, <laughs> not not what you'd see now. But uh, so whenever that first kind of introduction to makeup, I was kind of like intrigued, yeah. like curious. So I just kind of started to play around, and probably in about seventh grade, I just kind of went in with it, you know, with the <laughs> colors and all that kind of stuff. So I think just playing around uh, really just keep playing with it and that's yeah. kind of what started all that. Sweet. Um, being a makeup artist, what are some of the biggest challenges you face? Planning. I am a horrible planner and it's it's hard whenever I have people text me and they're like, mm. hey, you know, can you excuse me in like in four days and I have a job and I'm like, <laughs> what do I do, what do I do? And then like with weddings, wedding planning is the hardest because they're like, oh, hey, I have seven bridesmaids and one bride and there's one of me. And, you know, you got to plan out how long is it going to take me to do each person and then like to clean and set up. And it's hard. It's planning is the hardest part. <laughs> um, when doing appointments for your clients, how do you like prepare for those? Like, how do you get it all together? Well, like with planning first, I start off with like a game plan. Um, so for like prom season, I'll start off with you know, everyone's per person is booked on the hour, mm -hmm. and then I'll try and I'll try and squeeze in like a little bit of time for me to clean with like the last five minutes mm -hmm. until the next hour. But uh, sometimes that doesn't always happen, and you lose yeah. track of time. <laughs> so having a good game plan of just like being mentally focused, like, yeah. okay, I can do this. <laughs> I can do this because um, yeah, it's it's a lot of planning, and you don't schedule yourself breaks <sighs> even to eat. So. Oh. Oh, no. It's a long day. <laughs> um, so whenever you do makeup for people, do you only do it for like special occasions, or is it just like a random thing? Or? I mean, typically, typically it's for special occasions. Mm -hmm. um, like obviously being April, mm -hmm. prom season's coming up. So normally, like around this time, it's prom. But then there's also like senior pictures and yeah. graduation and graduation parties. And there's mm -hmm. also like engagement photo shoots and weddings. Yeah. So. Typically, people seek out makeup artists for formal events, but, yeah. you know, like, sometimes people are like, hey, I'm going to a party. I can't do my makeup. You want to oh. do it? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> like, whatever. Like, I do my sister's makeup for yeah. dance, so. Awesome. Yep. Um, how do you promote your business? Uh, whenever I promote it, I typically, the... My most popular platform is Instagram. That's usually where I communicate with my fans and my followers is through Instagram for people who, you know, want a book or any of that kind of stuff. It's through Instagram. But then I also make beauty tutorials on YouTube, and that's kind of where I just can express more of my passion and can actually talk. I can talk about whatever the heck I want to talk about. You know, you can just film yourself and put it up on YouTube. <laughs> but like Instagram is where. I will, you know, I can say, okay, listen up, this is what's coming up mm -hmm. in my world. This is, you know, I'm really loving this product right now. It's just kind of quick snippets mm -hmm. of whatever. And then, like, on YouTube, I can, you know, show what I'm loving to do with my makeup, like, important products that I'm liking at the moment. I can, you know, actually go in-depth with showing people yeah. what techniques work great for me. So awesome. it's a little bit of both. Sweet. Well, we have a little video snippet of um, one of her tutorials, so we'll be back. Uh, you know what? It is limited edition, but I believe it is still on sale at Sephora.com still. Uh, but yeah, you get this, and this packaging is just so cute. And then my sister bought me the Lux Box 
lipstick holder that revolves and it's like using <laughs> my uh, little ghetto tripod <laughs> so that is my tripod right now I got a new lipstick holder that holds like 130 lipsticks I had to go out and buy lipsticks so what do you know I bought lipsticks I love makeup forever lipsticks so I purchased three of those See here they have rogue intense artist intense lipstick line and then they have a rogue artist natural the naturals are so creamy and smooth and nice on the lips. I got the shade N52. This is like such a pretty coral for like the lips just in the summer. Just throw on and it's so... These natural ones are so creamy. It's amazing. And then N10. I have not used this yet, but I mean, this is like a, a typical lipstick shade. Like I will get so much use out of this. It's so pretty and... It's just like, what? what's not to love about these lipsticks? This is in the shade N10, and this one is in N52. This is an intense one, so these are like more pigmented and pop of color than the naturals, and I don't think they're as satiny and creamy, but they still feel nice on those, don't get me wrong. Uh, they're just not as natural. That's the best way to describe it. Enjoyed that video. Um, how many hits do you get on your channel? Uh, I'm not really sure. I think um, I have somewhere like around maybe 2,000 subscribers, which I mean, it's just more of like my friends and family base. There's some people who follow me like on my Instagram account who like follow me on YouTube as well, but really it's just me, you know, just talking mm -hmm. and that's basically just me talking and showing people, you know, what I like to do because yeah. there's, I don't have like, there's not that many people who also share the same passion as me that I... Mm -hmm know in Kansas City mm -hmm. in Liberty so and, and like through social media and YouTube I have you know friends who also share the same passion and mm -hmm. we can talk and all that kind of stuff and it's really awesome awesome well we'll be right back I can't do this what? All right, um, Brooklyn, how often do you clean your like brushes and does it make a difference in like the after look? Yeah, um, personally I clean my brushes. I try to do it about once every one or two weeks. Um, sometimes when you, I get busy, you know, it doesn't yeah. always happen. But for like client brushes and all those tools, I clean them after each use, you know, that's sanitization is like yeah. the most important thing. Um, but yeah, like it makes a huge difference if your brushes are dirty or clean. You know, if you're doing your eye makeup and you're, you thought your brush was clean and it has black on it, yeah. you got a problem. <laughs> so yeah, cleaning and sanitization is super important, especially when it comes to like creams. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if you have a really old cream product that's been used a lot, sometimes they can get really dirty. and it can spread, like bacteria yeah. can grow in them and it can spread and it can cause breakouts or, you know, really bad things. So it's really important that you keep your makeup sanitized. I should probably start doing that. <laughs> um, how do you decide which looks and like techniques will fit your client best? Uh, it starts, uh, it takes a lot of practice to fit, to decide like different eye shapes and facial features and what will look best. And that's all just from, you know, practicing. But, uh, you know, like if someone who someone has like maybe smaller eyes, maybe you don't want to go for the all black look yeah. because it can make their eyes look smaller. Or if they have, you know, like really strong cheekbones, you maybe mm -hmm. don't want to do as much contour because then it can make it look a little bit too harsh. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's all just, you know, just sitting there first initially and just looking at their face and mm -hmm. just seeing, okay, just analyzing their features, mm -hmm. see what's 
really awesome with their features and try and emphasize them. Awesome. So, like, whenever you do um, others' makeup, do you just have, like, a bunch of random shades that, like, like decide which one, like, fits best, or do you just kind of, like... Uh, I mean, yeah, I have most <laughs> shades of foundation and cream products, and usually I can just judge somebody's shade just by looking at them, and you don't actually have to necessarily have the exact shade for somebody because after you know you can always mix and match if you have a shade that's too dark for somebody and one is too light you can combine them and make a medium shade and then on top of that you have highlighting and contouring and blush mm -hmm. so you can always alter you know the effects too gotcha um what is your favorite product to use it's a pin like okay, i don't have a favorite product because there's so many different there's face products, there's mm -hmm. eye products, and then in, in those categories, there's tons of different categories. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm really loving. Um, am I? Yeah. <laughs> right now, I'm really loving the Anastasia Gilded Lip Gloss. This mm -hmm. is an awesome, awesome gloss. It look it flatters everybody. Their skin tone, it flatters everybody. It's this really pretty PG gold shade, like. I can't express, yeah. I can't express this. It looks way better on, I promise. But <laughs> it flatters any lip color. You can do, you know, a nude and put this on over. Mm -hmm. Or you can do a, like a coral, a hot coral, and put yeah. this on over and it'll just look really good. It's really a flattering lip gloss and I'm really loving it, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, when you're doing others' makeup, what are some like major tips to like, keep in mind that people might not already know? Um, Typically when I do other people's makeup, they don't have nearly like like the most perfect knowledge of makeup. I mean, nobody does. Like I'm still trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So typically I kind of start and I try to fill them in with just the basics to make sure they have like the foundations of makeup, you know, like don't mm -hmm. apply um, um, liquid over a powder because then that kind of gives the cakey effect or, yeah. you know, other random tidbits that I can't really think of off the top of my head. I, it kind of just comes to me as I'm doing makeup, you know, I'll just be like, oh, hey, right now I'm applying like a peachy shade in your transition for your crease. So then your eyeshadow isn't super harsh. Yeah. So like I'll tell, you know, my clients like as I'm doing their makeup, mm -hmm. this is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. So and if they'll ask me a question, I'll go more in depth with like why I do it this way or, you know, just little tips and tricks because I want not only am I doing their makeup, but I also want to inform them about you know the makeup process and everything mm -hmm. because I just love talking to people yeah. about makeup like <laughs> that's just what I do and I want people to learn more awesome um what is your biggest pet peeve like seeing other like makeup artists and like just kind of glancing around um something that bothers me is like like I want to, to like help people but at the same time they may take it the wrong way and yeah. be like yeah. Like they're so like offended, but so I usually don't say anything. But I'm just that's one of my biggest pet peeves because like I want to be just be able to say, mm -hmm. oh hey, you should try this instead of this, mm -hmm. or and then like them take it the wrong way. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I'm just trying to help you. <laughs> like I'm not trying to offend you or anything. That's yeah. I just wish I could I inform yeah. without offending. So I, but I don't really just don't say yeah. anything at all. <laughs> um. Do you see yourself continuing as a makeup artist after high school? I would like to. I mean, I think everybody should have the opportunity to have continue their passion throughout their life without being held back. Um, you know, it would be. I could see. Could, I could see it being a challenge, being able to start up like my own salon. Mm -hmm. You know, and if I were to create my own makeup salon, I don't necessarily think I would start up in Kansas City, Missouri. You yeah. know, I might want to start like California or Florida mm -hmm. or, you know, or Miami or Texas. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a bunch of challenges within itself, but I would like to. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> it's been really nice talking to you. Yeah. Thank you for I, having me. Oh, thanks for coming and letting me interview <laughs> you.